An ice cream shop employee dealing with girl troubles becomes entangled with his mysterious and beautiful new neighbor. One morning, Cameron finds himself lying next to Diane in bed, and they profess their love for each other. Suddenly, he wakes up and disappointedly realizes the romantic moment with his crush was a dream. Later, his father Hunter says they need to talk about his plans once summer ends, when his mother Carol points out that summer just started, implying that they shouldn't pressure their son, the man reminds her that Cameron already took a gap year after high school. Eventually, the father says he'll give him three weeks to think of a concrete plan for the future. At the ice cream shop where he works, Lenny, the assistant manager, admonishes the employee for coming in late. Then, the boss asks him to close the store tonight, but Cameron says he can't because he has a date with Diane. Lenny scoffs, skeptical that the man managed to score a date with someone so beautiful. Meanwhile, a mysterious woman shows up outside the family's neighbor's house. That afternoon, Cameron's co-worker Liz expresses her annoyance that she now has to close the store because he wouldn't do it. Then, she asks if he wasn't lying about the date with Diane. So he explains that they've been friends for years and he's the first person she texted when she got back to town from college. After work, the man stops by Diane's house and sees her lounging in a bikini in the backyard. Suddenly, Chad and Jason appear and accuse him of secretly taking pictures of the woman. Then, the bully grabs his phone and tosses it onto the street. Diane hears the commotion and asks what's going on. Chad says they saw Cameron spying on her, so the embarrassed man says he can prove he wasn't. However, when he tries to retrieve his phone, a vehicle runs over it. Eventually, Diane defuses the situation by telling the bullies to leave, and Cameron also heads home. That evening, the man sees the mysterious woman undressing in her room in the house next door, and she catches him peeping. At dinner, Hunter says he won't buy the son a new phone, and adds that he should have stood up for himself against the bullies who've tormented him for three years. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and Cameron quickly stands up to see who it is. When he peeks through the peephole, he realizes it's the woman next door, Victoria, and he panics that she might tell his parents what he did. However, when he opens the door, all he sees is Diane who says she didn't see anyone else outside. Then, the pair head to a pizza parlor to grab some dinner where she apologizes for all the circumstances that led to his broken phone. Minutes later, Cameron waves his friend Martin over to their table despite the woman asking him not to. The awkward man stammers and quickly excuses himself once he sees Diane. Her annoyed reaction confuses Cameron, who doesn't know what he did wrong. After dropping him off at his house, the woman finally reveals that Martin stood her up at senior prom and she still doesn't know why. To lift her spirits, Cameron says he never would have stood her up if he was her date. Then, she recalls the night he came over to her house and they drank her father's liquor. She says she was supposed to tell him something she's never told anyone that night, but he fell asleep. Suddenly, the man sees Victoria menacingly standing in the driveway, prompting him to rush back inside the house. In his room, he peeks through the curtains and sees her staring directly at him. To his surprise, she appears behind him and he apologizes profusely for watching her undress. He explains that their neighbor, Miss Carpenter, is usually the person he sees through the window. So Victoria says she's house-sitting for a few weeks. When he opens the door to let her leave, she says he needs to drive her around town as punishment for peeping. Cameron reasons that he can't drive because he hasn't paid off the vehicle's insurance, so the woman tells him to figure it out or else she'll talk to his parents. Later, the hesitant man drives Victoria to an office building where she confiscates the car keys to make sure he doesn't abandon her there. From the vehicle, he watches a man open the door for the beguiling woman. Minutes later, the impatient Cameron walks up to the entrance to see what's taking so long. Suddenly, the man from earlier limps toward the doors and begs him for help. Confused and scared, he runs back to the car and locks all the doors. The injured man leaves bloody handprints on the windows as he continues begging. To Cameron's horror, he watches as Victoria bites the man's neck, ending his life. On the ride back, he deduces that she's a vampire, and she threatens to kill him if he refuses to be her driver. Outside his house, Victoria kisses Cameron and says he needs to try. Her. The next day, Hunter asks his son about the blood, and the neighbor arrives just in time to explain that she saw an injured deer slam into the vehicle last night. Then, the woman tells the father that she knows all about the insurance issue with the son's car, and that she's willing to pay for this month's fee if he'll drive her around while she's in town. 
Despite Cameron's many excuses as to why he can't, Hunter doesn't see anything wrong with the arrangement, much to Victoria's delight. Later, Martin admits that he stood Diane up at prom because he doesn't know how to act around her. Then, he asks the friend for help, convincing the woman to give him another chance. That night, Cameron waits in the car while the vampire heads inside another building. Moments later, a person's lifeless body lands by the vehicle from several stories above, startling the man. Eventually, Victoria returns to the car, hungrily licking the blood off her fingers. Before heading home, Cameron makes sure to wash the blood from the window at a gas station. Hours later, the vampire appears beside him in bed and says it's time she told him the reason why she's in town. Victoria says she's 247 years old, and in 1890, a rival pack of vampires killed her lover when he refused to join them. She adds that over the last century, most of the pack members moved to America, a few of whom are in town and she vowed to eliminate every last one. After learning that the people she's killed weren't human, the relieved man says she should have told him from the start. The next day, Martin asks Cameron to tag along on his date with Diane because he's too nervous. Later, Lenny's in disbelief upon seeing the employee hanging out with Diane outside the shop. That night, the man asks the vampire how many she has left to eliminate in town. Victoria says there's one tonight, and another that she hasn't located yet. She explains that the elusive vampire was the one who killed her lover, who was also their pack master, and she vows to make the death as excruciating as possible. Despite Victoria's orders to stay in the car, Cameron insists on accompanying her into the building. In the basement, she confronts her target, but when the man sees Cameron, he fires several shots in his direction and he crumples to the floor. Seconds later, Victoria bites into the target's neck, easily defeating him. When she checks on Cameron, he smiles and reveals he played dead to distract the other vampire. However, she admonishes him for the risky move which could have costed him his life. Before they part ways, he asks her to drop by Martin and Diane's day tomorrow so he has an excuse to leave, and she agrees. The next day, Liz asks the man if he'd like to watch her friend's band play tomorrow night, but he politely declines. During the date, Cameron fills the awkward silence by sharing that Martin's trying out for a semi-pro baseball team this year. When he says he needs to leave, both of his friends beg him not to, aware that he's the only one capable of salvaging the painful situation. Just as Diane goes to the restroom, Victoria arrives to pick the man up. Outside, the vampire asks who the woman is, so Cameron explains that he's been in love with Diane since freshman year. She asks who Martin is, and he says the friend's in love with the same woman and he's helping out with their date. Perplexed, Victoria doesn't understand his methods, so he says he knows the more time Diane spends with Martin, the faster she'll realize how dull he is. That night, Cameron points out Chad and Jason who are outside the ice cream shop and says they've tormented him for years. So the vampire pretends she's the man's girlfriend and insults the bullies. The confrontation causes Chad to square up against Cameron, and he lands several blows. Victoria calls a timeout and coaches the man to hit the bully's ribs repeatedly, which he performs successfully. After Chad falls to the ground, the vampire concludes that due to the bully losing, they'll leave Cameron alone from now on, and they agree. In the car, the man says he thinks he broke his wrist, so Victoria hands him a small pendant vial from her choker and tells him to drink it. After he ingests the substance, she reveals that it was her blood. Panicked, Cameron asks if he'll turn into a vampire, so she assures him that it'll only help quickly heal his injuries. That night, while he imagines Diane and touches himself, Victoria appears in his bed and says the blood acts as a male performance enhancer as well. Then, she suggests that they do the deed to try and make Diane jealous. While they kiss, Hunter barges into the room but quickly backs away when he realizes what's going on. When the vampire wishes to continue the intimate moment, Cameron stops her and says he can't betray Diane. He believes the date went horribly and he might have a chance with a woman now, which Victoria thinks is naive. The next day, the father gives his son a knowing smile as they sit across from each other at the table. Later, Martin tells Cameron that the date fell apart the second he left. The friend asks him for help, but the man says maybe things didn't work out because they aren't meant to be. 
Meanwhile, Victoria stops by the vintage clothing store where Diane works. After recounting the complicated web of romantic entanglements he finds himself in, the man tells Liz that he's done prioritizing other people's happiness over his, so he reconsiders the co-worker's invitation to watch her friend's band play that night. That evening, Hunter gives his son prophylactics after learning of his many exploits. Just as he's about to leave to meet up with Liz, he sees Diane's car parked outside the neighbor's house. Curious, Cameron peeks through the window and sees his crush hanging out with Victoria. When the women head upstairs, he runs back to his house. Meanwhile, Liz waits for him outside the concert venue, wondering where he is. Concurrently, Cameron spies on the women from his bedroom window and watches in disbelief as they share a kiss. Seconds later, the vampire closes the curtains and turns off the lights, and the man realizes they're about to make love judging by their silhouettes on the bed. The next day, he sees Diane leave the neighbor's house, proving that she spent the night. After she drives off, the vampire asks if he enjoyed the show. He expresses his anger at her involving the one person he wishes she didn't, but Victoria snidely remarks that it'll never work out between him and Diane. When he says he isn't working for her anymore, the woman menacingly grabs him by the shirt collar and states that he's in no position to refuse one last night as her driver. Later, Cameron tells Martin that he needs to go on another date with Diane and he'll make sure it's a success. Then, he heads to the ice cream shop and tells Lenny that he is quitting. Outside, Liz punches him for standing her up at the concert last night. He drops by the vintage clothing store and Diane tells him that Martin asked her out again. That afternoon, Carol hands the son his new phone but asks that he keep it a secret from his father for a few weeks. Later, Cameron tells Martin to wear an earpiece during the date so he can dictate everything he says. The friend asks what he'll say in case the woman finds the earpiece suspicious, so the man tells him to reason that he's awaiting an important call from the baseball team. During the date, Cameron listens in on the conversation and Martin recites everything that he dictates. After the successful date, Diane hands Martin the car keys and tells him to take her anywhere he wants. Cameron orders his friend to take the woman home, but he refuses to listen and plans on heading to Lover's Lane. Exasperated, the man drives to the same location to try and stop the date. Behind a tree, he watches as Diane whispers into the earpiece and tosses it out the window, implying that she knew he was on the other end the entire night. However, instead of making love, she bites Martin's neck, revealing that she's a vampire. Cameron drives to the ice cream shop looking for Liz, but she isn't there. Seconds later, Diane appears, and the man tells her to stay away because she killed his friend. She says Martin's alive, shows him the man curled up in the storage compartment, and explains she simply made him stronger to help him play professional baseball. Cameron expresses the betrayal he feels from all the years she kept her secret from him. She says she tried telling him that night in high school when he fell asleep after they got drunk, so he asks why she hasn't said anything in the two years since, and she reasons that she was afraid he'd react the way he's reacting now. Then, she admits that she loves him even though she swore to never love again after witnessing every mortal she's cared for perish from old age. She explains that she never acted on her feelings toward him because it'll never work out due to her true nature. As they share a kiss, Lenny watches from several feet away. Later that night, Victoria tells Cameron that she didn't know Diane was a vampire until she got a closer look, and that she chose not to tell him because she knew he wouldn't believe her. Then, she reveals that the woman he loves is the elusive vampire she has been looking for and that he is going to be the bait. Sensing that Cameron's in danger, Diane arrives at his house. Suddenly, Lenny jumps out from behind a tree, says he knows what she is, and threatens to tell everyone. So the woman takes him down and feeds on his blood. Minutes later, she and Martin barge through the door to confront Victoria who's taken Cameron hostage. The women engage in a fierce battle, and when Victoria lunges at Diane with a blade, the latter shields herself with a wooden tray and throws the vengeful vampire empire to the floor. While straddling Victoria, Diane forces her to listen to what happened a century ago. She says their pack master was a vicious leader and she wanted nothing more than to escape. She met Victoria's lover who told her that she'd be safe in their pack and even gave her his blood. However, her heartless master found out and he killed the woman's lover. After hearing the truth, Victoria apologizes and delights in the fact that she found a living pack member. They share a kiss and she suggests rebuilding a family together. As they say their goodbyes, Cameron tells Victoria that he had fun killing vampires with her. He asks Diane why she has to leave, and she says it's time for her to move on. She knows he doesn't want her to go, but he still has a whole life left to live. 
After the vampire gives him one last kiss, Lenny, now a vampire, asks Cameron to tell Liz that she is the new assistant manager. Then, he joins the women and Martin in the vehicle just as they drive off. The next day, Cameron tells his parents that he plans on becoming a writer focusing mainly on the vampire genre. Outside the ice cream shop, he apologizes to Liz and tries to recount everything that happened in the last three weeks. Even though she doesn't believe him, Liz accepts his apology and lets him in the store. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.